Hello everyone and welcome to this Dungeon Editor's tutorial for Legends of Grimrock 2. In this tutorial we are going to create a trap and we are going to uh, set up some basic scripting. We are also going to see how we can use the boss entity that we learned about in the previous tutorial to use it as a counter or, or, or visual countdown like, a, like we have a, a timer, a visual timer uh, before the trap gets sprung. So let's just get right to it. Before I started this recording I have dug out this room here and this room is just a, a big room that we are gonna uh, place our trap in and uh, there are some doors here that will prevent the party from getting back up since they need to fall down into the room and we are gonna create a puzzle here, uh, a lever puzzle uh, that you, you will have to solve in order to, for these uh, doors to open so you can escape in time before this whole chambers, chamber gets uh, flooded with uh, magma. So let's just let's just get going and I'm gonna place an altar here. I'm also going to bring in a dungeon ceiling, dungeon ceiling shaft. I'm gonna place that here. Since my room is two stories I will bring this up by one. I'm also going to bring in a light mine ceiling light. I'm gonna place that here. The same thing with the light. I need to bring it up by one. And if you take a look at what we did, we come in and we can see this uh, this light shining down from the from the ceiling, from the pit ceiling, and uh, this is uh, this is looking to be like an like a scene from Indiana Jones or something. And that's precisely what we are <laughs> trying to achieve here. I'm going to have some item on the altar and uh, I choose the altar items and I'm going to place Bane, which is an epic item on the altar. So if you move the body forward like this, we can see Bane is on the altar and we can take it and we can place it again. Uh, I'm going to trigger the trap when somebody removes this uh, axe from the altar. So uh, what you're going to run into is if I ever take the axe and refresh, I will have duplicated it. Uh, what you're going to run into is that uh, what if somebody doesn't take the axe? What if I place another item on the altar and I remove that? Then our remove item trigger will get sprung even though that was not what we intended. So in order to prevent the party from placing anything on the item or uh, placing any item on the altar, uh, I'm simply going to disable clickable. And that's something that we can find in the components section for the altar. So if I throw this X away, I refresh. The altar is there. I can take it, but if I try to uh, put it back on, it's impossible. And likewise, if I had some other item uh, before, I would not be able to place it where the axe is. So, so by disabling clickable, we are able to, you know, take the item from the altar, but uh, after that, uh, we will not be able to interact with the altar in any way. So, uh, for this particular trap, well, well, that works for us. That's that's pr precisely what we are trying to achieve. So, uh, Bane is on the altar, and over here we are going to place uh, our uh, lever lever combination uh, puzzle. So I'm going to place three levers here: one, two, and three. I'm also going to place some buttons: wall button one and two and the idea is that uh, the idea is that if the, the party starts up here they will come here and they will ah see there's some there's some fat loot down on the altar and they will just jump off this and run directly to it pick it up trigger the trap and then they will <laughs> have the headache of finding out what to do with these in order for the doors to open and they will have a limited amount of time to do it before everything gets flooded with uh, magma 
but a, a a clever player he would of course take a look at all the room and, and figure figure this stuff out before he takes the axe he's, he's going to be careful so uh, let's just start on the on the lever puzzle I think let's just get that over with so uh, I'm gonna place a script entity here and I'm also going to place three counters one two and three if we're going to have a lever puzzle which will have any kind of combination like this needs to be up this needs to be down this needs to be up then you press a button and something happens we need a way to query for the for the state of the levers and there are many ways to do it and some people do it by scripting some people query the levers directly from a script but uh, I'm going to do this in a more visual way and I'm simply going to use counters to do it so I will call this fire counter one uh, like this and I will name the others fire counter two and three two and fire counter three like this and then I will name the levers uh, fire lever one like this and this one will be fire lever 2 and fire lever 3 and then I will hook every lever to its own counter uh, the initial value of the counter is 0 so I'm simply going to create a connector that says if you run into this by the way if you if you click uh, on a counter and you're unable to choose increment or decrement then it doesn't show you the functions of the counter simply save your dungeon with control S and press uh, control R to reload it and it should be fixed so this is a this is a bug uh, like this and oops I'm gonna choose fire counter 1 and decrement. So if I activate this lever uh, the counter will go from 0 to 1. If I deactivate the lever or put it back in its original position I will decrement the counter uh, bringing it back to 0. So this counter simply stores the binary value of the lever so it's either 1 or 0. Uh, I'm gonna do the same thing over here I'm gonna hook this up to fire counter 2 and on deactivation I'm going to decrement again if I activate this increment it and on deactivation I will decrement it so on active on deactive increment decrement on active deactive increment decrement on active deactive increment decrement so these counters are storing zeros or ones for the levers so now I can use the script just to easily query the, the counters and therefore have my combination so I'm gonna create a function here called fire puzzle one so, yeah. and this will simply be uh, an if loop so if fire counter one which is a counter I'm gonna get it the value of that counter and if that value is precisely something it's either 1 or 0 so I say if it's 1 and I'm gonna grab this guy simply save you guys from watching me type because I know that's painful simply gonna close the function so if the fire counter 1 is 1 and 2 is 1 and 3 is 1 so if all the levers are down basically then we will do something we will uh, take this door over here and this is a door we will open it else 
if this is not the combination, uh, this door will be closed. Like this. Uh, one, one, one. It's pretty easy. So let's have it like this. Uh, lever one needs to be down. Lever two needs to be up, and lever three needs to be down. Then we will open the door. So we take the button because that the button is not doing anything right now. We add a connector to it and we query that script fire puzzle. So uh, if we press the button, the button is executing this and it's checking the state of the counters, these counters over here. And if he finds the correct state, he will open the door. If he doesn't find the correct state, he will uh, close the door or if the door is already closed, the door will simply stay closed. So let's move the party back up here and take a look at what we did. So I press this here, nothing happens. The combination was this one down and this one down. So if I press that, the door opens and the party is able to escape. So, but if I change it, that will not work. So if I have one, one, and zero, uh, nothing happens. So, so this is a simple lever puzzle. So like this. Uh, another thing that I don't really like is now the now this is open, but if I move this, uh, nothing happens to the door because the door only gets uh, uh, triggered when I press the button. So if I press the button, the button will go through the the state. He will say, ah, the state is incorrect and he will close the door. So if I want the door to close, if I remove the levers from the correct uh, sequence, I will have to create a function. So I'm simply going to call function reset doors like this. And again, this is just an, an a simple if uh, if mine door one this is a door should have copied that as well uh, is open and we're gonna is open if that is exactly true or if If the second door, mine door two, which is this one, mine door two, if that door is open, then we are going to close them. So close, and of course, I need the second door here as well. close and the if loop and the function. So the function is reset doors and we are just checking if uh, the first door if it's open if that's true and or and this one doesn't matter this one or this one if, if either door is open we will try to close them both. So we will have to put a toggle on this so if something you know doesn't matter if it's activated or deactivated just if somebody toggles this lever we will check for a reset door same over here if somebody toggles this lever I want to check if the doors are open and if they're open I want to close them close. No, sorry. Reset door. So, toggle, reset door. Toggle. Yep, it's looking good. So, if we go back and we do the cor correct combination again, like this, and the door is open, but if somebody touches the levers, 
uh, we close the door again and you will have to input the correct sequence and boom, to to open the door of course this button here is not doing anything so uh, let's just copy this function in its entirety like this rename it to fire puzzle 2 we are going to check the same counters but we are simply going to open a different door or keep that door closed if something happens and here we can change uh, change the counter uh, or change the sequence so let's just do something like this so the first lever he needs to be in a, in the up position and the next two needs to be down uh, in order for this to work so let's just check that off uh, uh, I forgot the combination <laughs> The first is up, yeah, this one down, this one down, and no, we forgot to hook the button to the script. Uh, we are going to check for fire puzzle 2, of course. So, refresh, full screen, this one, this one, the door opens, again, if somebody messes with it, it closes, and this is the correct function for this one so both doors cannot stay open at the same time and uh, and the party will have to find the correct sequence in order to escape so now we have that out of the way we got this setup uh, where we have this puzzle and this is the, the the puzzle of the room but now we need to focus on the trap so uh, what we were going to do is we were going to trigger something when this got removed when Bane the axe is removed from the altar we want to trigger something so let's place a script entity here and uh, let's create a function and let's call it let's just call the function start magma countdown something like that so as soon as I'm gonna end the function so we can hook it up to the altar so on remove item and that's the only thing we can do since we have disabled clickable we can only remove the axe on remove item I want you to jump into the script and go through start magma countdown so if somebody removes it what we put in here is going to execute uh, I'm going to bring in the boss fight if you watch the, the previous tutorial you are familiar with this entity I'm going to take auto deactivation off I'm going to give this boss fight uh, some name let's just uh, Let's just give it a magma countdown. Uh, yeah, just magma countdown. Let's give it, and this is the, the like you uh, like I showed you before. This this is the name that will get displayed above the boss fight. So because this, I'm going to use this as a timer or or a visual indicator of uh, how when the room is going to get flooded uh, I will simply say something here like uh, time until chamber fills with magma and boss fight on that or time until chamber gets flooded with magma yeah I like that more so but this is a boss fight so we need a boss and uh, the health part of the boss is is linked to a monster so this is the part where we get creative uh, I'm going to place a cell in the map which is just just off 
the party will never get here and inside this cell I'm going to place the magma golem monster like this going to check him out he has 1000 in health okay that sounds good and he's called magma golem 1 so here in this function where we're going to start the boss fight uh, we are simply going to say magma what was the name countdown magma countdown let's say boss fight add monster and the monsters is the magma column one monster like this magma countdown I'm gonna start copy pasting again because I'm I'm terrible at typing and we are going to activate this like this and we're gonna do more I'm gonna place a timer here within this and the timers name is timer one uh, yeah one thing to note about timers in Grimrock 1 uh, we had the ability to set the initial state of the timer there was something here called the initial state and that was either uh, it was either you know activated or deactivated but uh, that's missing from here so if I just run now the timer will just start running but I have found out that by unclicking the timer here uh, the timer will be in its stopped state until I trigger it so I'm gonna take that off take off the timer and here I'm going to start the timer so it's going to be timer 1 and uh, that's a timer and we're gonna start it so something like this well and the timer uh, he's going to tick and he's going to tick down the health of this monster and that will be the visual indicator of how much time is left in the puzzle so uh, I need to create a function here which is called uh, hearth golem and it's going to be a lot of typing so I prepared for that in advance and I'm gonna copy my hearth golem function yep here in here and like I like like with the previous tutorials I will uh, these these scripts will all be available on the forum and I will put a link in the description so uh, function hot column that will simply go through uh, a time count and I'm gonna set the time count outside the function which is the time count is one and then it will simply in every step it will bring the magma golem down so uh, when it ticks down three four five in every tick we are bringing the health from to 800 750 700 600 and so forth all the way down to Shiro and at the end uh, we deactivate the boss fight the magma countdown boss fight we find the golem magma golem 1 we say monster die and die equals to true and that simply kills him so he will get removed from the map and then we will stop the timer uh, boom I'm gonna write boom here because uh, this is the when we stop the timer I will fill this up with uh, with lava uh, it's unrealistic that lava will simply emerge here so we're gonna put some visual indicators as to what is going to happen so dungeon what's it called dungeon fire pit yep dungeon fire pit I'm gonna place dungeon fire pit here and it's gonna we're gonna take a look at it 
So this is the dungeon fire pit, and as you can see, it has these fire particles and and there's lava flowing down here beneath, and uh, so it's perfect, perfect for our our little trap. So I'm gonna take this guy, and I'm going to disable the light and the particles from it, and y you can see that changed it. So now the fire the fire particles are not emanating from it and but we still have the lava down here and I'm going to enable them again during the trigger of the trap so let's just place these guys around the room like this and press play now they're all making sounds so maybe I'll just disable the sound for a while so, this is good. Now it's not so unrealistic that lava will emerge from these shafts and uh, and burn everything. So, uh, we remove the axe from the altar and the start magma countdown gets triggered. This counter over here, it goes down by one every second and we are going to connect that counter to the hurt golem function so when we start the counter the counter will go every second into the hurt golem function uh, when the time count is one he will simply do nothing when the count time count is two he will again do nothing but when the count time count is three he will bring the monster down to 950 and like you know before he started at 1000 so the health bar will get go down and that's what we are going to see in the boss fight so and the timer will simply roll through all these functions always bringing it down until the end when he's going to deactivate and he's going to deactivate the boss file as well and we are going to have our boom but before we're going to have our boom we are going to create a function called shake it baby and in the shake it baby function we are gonna shake the camera a little bit and we are gonna we're gonna put back the uh, we're gonna put back the the particles that we removed from the from the fire pits so party party camera no shake camera like this shake camera and uh, the first number is the amount uh, we are going to shake the camera and you know how, how forcefully we are we are about to uh, shake the camera and uh, even though the number is quite small which I'm going to put in here uh, that doesn't mean that is it's uh, it's a big shake so I'm gonna do like this the next number is the uh, uh, the duration or how long I want the camera to be shaking and I want it to be shaking for about 60 seconds something like that and also uh, we're gonna turn on all the particles of all these fire pits and that's also something I prepared in advance, hopefully. Yeah. This is the shake it baby function. And I'm simply gonna copy it here in. Oh that was a bad copy. <laughs> it isn't enough, I can't type, I can't even copy. So something like this. So we have a function called Shake It Baby. It takes the party, it shakes the camera for 60 seconds, and it enables the particles on the fire pits from 1 to 8. And they are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. So the naming is correct. And the altar on remove item we are going to call 
for the shake it baby function. So the only thing left to do is the boom. Here's the boom. And the boom we got here. So when the timer reaches 23, when the when we deactivate the boss fight, when we kill the golem and we, when we stop the timer, we will spawn flame waves on the exact locations of these uh, lava pits. So flame waves uh, are extremely cool effect and uh, it simply spawn, we're gonna spawn a flame wave, we're gonna spawn it on the first level, we are here on the first level, we're gonna spawn it in these in these grids the facing doesn't really matter since it's an effect and but the elevation matters and we are on the zero elevation here so we're gonna spawn it at the zero elevation so I'm gonna save this gonna stop and we are gonna see this in action so I come into the room uh, I will remove the axe the axe as soon as I remove the axe, I will trigger the start magma countdown and I will trigger the shake. I will turn back on all the particles here and the health of this column will start reducing from 1000 all the way down to 0. When it reaches 0, I will deactivate the boss fight, uh, I will deactivate the timer and I will flood this room with uh, with fire. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna kill the body just just so you see yeah something from the copy paste ruining our day gonna turn back the music like this so we come down we are greedy greedy adventurers we see the axe we're gonna run straight to it without even caring about this puzzle and we're gonna remove it and as soon as I remove the axe, you see that the, the timer is ticking down. We have the particles coming back and everything is shaking, so you have the feeling that something really bad is going on and you start pulling away at the levers, nothing is happening, you're pulling away at the levers and then everything goes boom. So they had a really bad day. Let's stop this and do this again. So the the, the careful adventurer, he would of course go down here and he would say, oh my god, this is a trap. This looks like a trap. This is so a trap. So he would, you know, try to figure, figure this out before he takes the axe. And he said, oh my god, it was an easy puzzle. So now he's gonna He's gonna grab the axe. Now I have two of those. The timer gets count, but this is easy for him. He simply gets here on top and he can watch the fireworks from above. So I think this is a neat way of using the boss fight. Doesn't you don't need to be fighting a boss. Everything is on fire and we're back to normal and the shake is should be residing should be residing <laughs> yeah I think it's residing yep so this is it this is how we we can create some visually cool traps and if we if we do this just one more time so you can see what what is actually going on behind the scenes uh, I'm gonna refresh here and I'm gonna take the axe and I'm gonna press F1 so I can just clip out of the dungeon so I'm gonna press this I'm gonna clip out of the dungeon here we have our magma golem and he's just cramped in there having a really bad day and slowly taking down so he is the monster that is actually being displayed here. And when he is all the way down, we kill him. 
and everything just explodes in fire. So we are back inside the dungeon. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. Uh, of course, uh, the the lever puzzle itself it wasn't really hard, and people can people can you know. Uh, use this just as a startup platform to create something that's uh, to create something that's even more cooler but uh, also to note with the timer of the interval that the if you think the time of the puzzle is too short or if you think that you know the party needs more time you can simply increase the interval so uh, for example now if I if I take this uh, you will see that the 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 health bar it takes all you know twice as much time for it to go down, so the party has uh, has more time to maneuver and they have more time to figure out the puzzle. Uh, also, if you want to be really really evil, we can uh, we can do something like 0 0.5. 0 0.5 is really fast. So if they if they take this off, it's you know uh, it's even it's starting to go down even before even before it and everybody will die again. So you can you can adjust the adjust the time and adjust the rate of of the puzzle by changing the the timer interval of the of the timer. Uh, of course, you can give the monster more health as well but then you would have to you know account for that in the in the in the in the script where you're counting him down uh, yeah I think that's it uh, I hope you hope you enjoyed this and uh, thank you for watching